Good morning and welcome to morning meditation. We're on Psalm chapter 29. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. As we approach Psalm chapter 29 there, we see uh, many things, and really we could go many different directions here. Uh, But number one, the Bible says we're to give glory to God. Uh, If you look at the model prayer, uh, the one that that teaches us how to pray, uh, it says, Our Father which art in heaven, uh, hallowed be thy name. And so the first thing we should do whenever we pray is take some time to give glory to God's name. Uh, I imagine if we gave as much glory to his name as we do uh, praying about personal needs and and uh, emergencies, we might see some more prayers get answered. Uh, but I want to uh, focus on the next couple of verses there. The voice of the Lord is upon many waters. And there's a couple of different things there. Uh, first of all, Romans chapter 1 says that the voice of the Lord is heard through creation. I have people often say, Pastor, what about people in these foreign lands who don't have a Bible, have never heard the gospel? Well, right here in Psalm 29, Romans 1, several other places, the Bible says that nature itself, the voice of the Lord, is hearable. Now, that doesn't mean an audible voice. So if somebody's telling you they're hearing an audible voice of the Lord, There's something wrong there. But what does it mean? The voice is upon many waters. Uh, All you have to do is look at the ocean, look at the creation around us to see that there's a God. There's no way that the uh, perfect position of the earth, uh, if we were one degree on our axis uh, toward the sun, you wouldn't be able to stand the heat. If we were one degree away from the sun, we'd be in a virtual winter. Uh, All this uh, garbage that we hear about climate change is nothing more than man-made religion. Uh, Man worshiping, again, Romans chapter 1, man worshiping the creature and the creation more than the creator. There's been fluctuations in temperature all through history. I don't know why man thinks uh, so highly of himself that he thinks he could change the temperature. Now... (coughs) We should take care of God's creation. I'm not saying we shouldn't. And we should be good stewards of it. But we shouldn't be worshiping it. And uh, something I hear over and over again, when we teach Bible principles and Bible living, uh, Bible worship of the Lord, oh, well, you're, you're a cult. You're demanding this and demanding that. First of all, we don't demand anything. Second of all, God is due the glory that his name uh, requires, and every person's going to give an answer for that one day. What you're really saying is, I want to continue in my selfish sins, doing my own selfish thing, and I want to be the God on the throne of my life. Now, I'm not perfect, you're not perfect, nobody's perfect, but Jesus Christ ought to sit on the throne of our heart. His voice is heard over many waters. Uh, That means he's in control of what's going on on this earth. That means that we can come to him with our smallest needs and with our greatest needs. That means if he asks us to do something, we ought to do it gladly and out of a heart of love and obedience to him. One day, when each one of us stand before him and give an answer, we'll either stand at one or the other judgments, the judgment seat of Christ, give an answer for what we've done with our stewardship or the great white throne judgment because we've refused the gift of salvation. God is so merciful. He's so gracious. He's so loving this morning. He's so powerful. He's the creator of this universe. He can take care of you. He can take care of me. Not only can he meet our needs, but he can meet other people's needs. Now, last of all, let's make sure that we submit to him today. Make sure that we bow before him and allow his will to be done in our lives. Then we can agree with the psalmist here and say, 
Great and glorious is the name of the Lord our God. God bless you and have a wonderful day.